The decision to convert to an electric motor was not light. It was a very labored and research intensive decision. And in the end, we have faced a lot of criticism. Criticism, absolutely, for our choice. Um, but it is perfect for what we need to be doing. Originally, I wanted to go completely engineless. Like, take the diesel out, plug up the through hole, and that be the end of it. No more motor. Maddie then proposed the question of, say we arrive at a marina, and we're tired, and we just want to get in and tie up, and it's stormy, and the winds aren't perfect. How do we get in? I said, we don't. We anchor outside, we wait for the conditions to improve, and then we go in. And with that, we now have an electric motor. <laughs> So it's very convenient when it comes to getting into slips. The largest criticism we receive is it's dangerous. It's so dangerous to not have a motor. Uh, and then I say, why? Why is it dangerous? What's going to happen? You're going to sit there a little longer. Um, we've got plenty of food stores, blah, blah, blah. And they say, you can't outrun a storm. Yeah. And that's where we tell them about our heavy displacement and full keel and we're not designed to outrun a storm even yeah. if we had a diesel motor we wouldn't be running storm away from storms so the electric motor is perfect for us it is not perfect for everybody but in the end I think we're really happy with our decision it was really Herbie's decision mostly I didn't back then I didn't know mo much about boats <laughs> yeah. I just told Maddie the pros and cons of each, Yeah. and it was a pretty unanimous choice to go with the electric. Ultimately, we did make the decision together, Yeah. and I'm so glad that we did. It was really good, and so far we have not regretted it, and I don't think we will. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so the, the advantages of a diesel are if there's no wind, you can motor real fast, go at haul speed, and get to your place in a reasonable amount of time, and then... Uh, you can use the motor to charge your batteries back. We can't charge our batteries by running the motor, we'll just drain it further, but we have solar panels, and if we're sailing along at a good speed, then it starts charging as well. So we're able to charge that way. And as far as motoring fast to get somewhere, we're not in a hurry. Right. We don't have a time constraint, and so I think that's what sets us apart from most people who we talk to. Yeah. When people refer to it being dangerous to not have a motor for storms. What a lot of people do with sailboats when there's a bad storm coming is they drop their sails, crank up the motor, and turn into a powerboat. But powerboats aren't the safe vessel to be in during a storm. You actually want sail up to keep the boat balanced and under control. So what we do in a storm is we heave to. So if we had a motor, we still wouldn't be running it. <laughs> We'd be hove to, riding the storm out and letting it pass. Not using up our diesel fuel. <laughs> yeah. And then the other problem, when people start running their diesel during a storm, the boat's being sloshed around a lot, and then sediment in the bottom of the tank gets kicked up. And then, a lot of times, people will be motoring through the storm, and then the motor conks out, because the fuel filters get clogged and the motor starves for fuel. So, having a motor and relying on a motor during a storm is actually very dangerous contrary to what everyone tells us. <laughs> so we've, as you can see, we've spent a lot of time defending our decision to yeah. use an electric motor, and now Herbie's going to show you the ins and outs of it. And maybe it will help to convince you that our choice was not a bad one for us. Yeah, I'll show you guys the ins and the outs of the electric motor and the electric drive system, and how it all ties together to make the boat run. The electric motor runs on 48 volts. The house bank for the boat, for everything else, runs on 12 volts. So we have two separate battery banks. We have a 12 volt for the house bank, which is divided into two more banks, so that's a whole nother story. And then we have the motor bank, which is eight batteries, uh, eight group 31 batteries, which gives us uh, 210 amp hours at 48 volts or 840 amp hours at 12 volt. Now, while it sounds really cool that we have all that battery power at 48 volts, we don't really have a way to get to it to use it for things like running the fridge or the navigation light should something come up. So, we have installed another component, which is a step-down converter. So it takes the 48 volt input and it steps it down to 12 volt for the output. Now that sucker 
it can produce a lot of power. So it can produce, I believe, 30 or 40 amps, which then feeds everything in the boat. So that's well more than enough to run the fridge and charge up the batteries and all that stuff. So we're gonna go over all those things. Now, an issue we had is the fuse blue that feeds from the 48 volt bank to the controller. So I tried to replace the fuse and I didn't disconnect the positive before I went to switch out the fuse. Now, when you take a fuse and you touch it to something that wants to be conducting 48 volts, it's a lot of power that runs through it. So it was actually so much that it burned and melted the fuse right in my hand. So I'm lucky I didn't get a burn in the process. So this time I'm going to be fixing it the proper way by disconnecting the positive and not trying to skip a step. So I actually damaged the fuse holder and today we're going to be replacing the fuse holder with a new one and get it all wired up. In the salon, underneath the cushion, we have this stylish plywood seat. And inside here, we have a water pump and the uh, converter. So this is the step-down converter. It's from Sevcon, and it takes 48 volt input and it puts out 12 volt. So this is the guy that we run to steal power from our motor bank and use it to power the house bank. Over here, in this bubble wrap, I have a spare. The electric motor is a really simple setup. So this box here that runs from this edge here all the way over to there is what houses the two motors. Now we currently have this dust shield on, which this side has a solid floorboard so it stays relatively clean. This side has a screen and as you can see is completely covered in Morty's hair. So we keep the dust covers on because that keeps the hair out of the motors and then keeps them running problem free. You're not able to directly see the motors right here. If you look back at our older videos when we were reinstalling the motor after I flooded it and filled this entire area with tap water, uh, you can see what the actual motor itself looks like, which it's kind of cool looking. So there's one motor on this side and one motor on this side. We have two solenoids. So this is to one motor and this is to the other motor. Uh, what these solenoids do is they pretty much cut off or turn on the power from the battery bank to the motors. So they're like our little interrupter. When I turn on the battery bank, you'll hear a beep and then two clicks. And the beep is the controllers turning on and being activated and the clicks are the two solenoids. When I turn them off, you'll hear them click again. It's pretty much like a giant cutoff switch so that way someone doesn't easily steal the boat by motoring away and then running out of power probably five minutes later. And then further back down this way, we have the coupler, which feeds the output shaft from the motor onto our very short shaft that feeds to the propeller. So right in there is our packing gland, and then it goes right on out to the propeller, which is trapped inside an aperture. So that is the entire setup of our electric drive. It's very small and very clean, and it doesn't require much maintenance at all. The only maintenance I have to do on these motors is once a year, I have to grease two Zertz fittings. That's it. They are located under the motor, uh, under the pulleys. So where the pulley from the motor attaches to the pulley on the, on the shaft, I need to grease those two fittings. So I just take a grease gun, hook it onto the fitting, squeeze a little, make sure the grease that's coming out is nice and clean, and then wipe up any excess, and that's it. So they're great because you turn them on and they run, you turn them off and they're done. They don't need to warm up, there's no oil changes, you don't have to worry about fueling issues. It's, it's very straightforward. Uh, if you are actually gonna sail, electric motors are great because they're always there ready to run for short periods of time. If you're gonna run your electric motors for really long periods of time, be a really good idea to get a generator that way you can constantly recharge the batteries as you're drawing them from the motors so I'm gonna turn it on and I'll show you guys what it sounds like with the electric motors running like right at them so they're they're quite quiet the loudest thing that we have of the electric motors is actually that housing that goes around them to keep the dust off it kind of rattles a little if we had actual insulation to an engine room you wouldn't hear it at all before you ever turn on your motor, 
you need to turn off the charger because if you don't turn off the charger the fuse that feeds from the charger to the battery banks might get overloaded and might blow. Controlling the electric motor is really straightforward. You have your throttle quadrant and your display. The display tells you things like what the battery voltage is, uh, how many kilowatts you're producing from the motor, how many hours you have left of runtime, the battery percentage itself, how many amps the motor is drawing, and the RPM of the propeller. So these are all really good things. That way you can dial in exactly how much you want to be drawing and how fast you want to be going. You're also, through this display, able to adjust the regen, which is how much power the motor produces while you're sailing and the propeller is spinning as you move through the water. So they're all cool little features. And then the throttle quadrant itself is very straightforward. In neutral, it's locked, so you don't have to worry about accidentally bumping it. Just lift the lever, and you go into forward. And it goes all the way down. That would be full throttle. And then you have neutral, and the same for reverse. You can go full reverse and lock it again. Now as far as how much thrust this thing produces, just watch these pilings go by as we cycle between forward and reverse. So this is in neutral, and then we'll go full forward. Just start shooting by. This here is the noise level that you can expect while motoring along. So this is drawing six amps. It's about a third of a horsepower, so not very much power, but this will move our boat along at about one to one and a half knots. And it'll be able to move the boat along for about 35 hours, according to display at this moment. You can see the shaft is spinning. It's pretty slow. Right here it's spinning at about 300 RPM. And this gives us enough power to move the boat along through the water. As we turn up the speed, you'll see that the runtime drops drastically as the amps consumed goes up as well. At this speed, we're drawing about 5 horsepower. The motor is drawing about 110 amps and it's doing 1100 RPM. And it has a runtime of about an hour and a half. Looking down here, you can see that the propeller shaft is spinning a lot faster now. It's not the quietest thing, you gotta speak up over it. It's kind of like a mild hair dryer, but it's nowhere near as loud as the diesel motor was. This is under full throttle, so now it's, it's a bit louder, but honestly, we don't use it at this setting because it draws too much power. You can hear the, this box kind of rattling a bit, and the shaft is just spinning super fast. At this setting, we'd be able to run along at about 7 to 8 knots, which is all speed for us. But for a very short amount of time, so in about 20 minutes, the batteries would be drained down and we'd be out of juice. But it's still a lot quieter than a diesel. Now mind you, this is completely exposed, nothing insulating this motor to keep the sound down. But if you have actual sound insulation, you won't hear this ever. The electric motor might seem like it's just a big drain on the batteries because all it does is draw power out of them and give nothing back. Uh, that's not entirely true. So when you're sailing along, if you start going at speeds more than five knots, especially six to eight knots, the, that's some really good numbers there, you'll start actually producing power. So while you're sailing, if you have a fixed bladed propeller, it's gonna start to spin as you drag it through the water. The awesome thing is that as your propeller spins, you don't have to worry about it, you know, destroying your transmission or anything, because one, there is no transmission. Uh, electric motors work with a single gear, but the propeller spinning will actually generate power. On an electric motor, while the propeller is spinning as you sail along, it's actually turning the motors. Now these electric motors then start acting like alternators or generators, and they will actually produce electricity for you. Now this is wonderful because while you're sailing along doing six knots or higher, you're actually producing plenty of power. So it functions as a hydro generator. Now the numbers that you get in 48 volt are at 
in our case, where we have the propeller inside a closed aperture, so it's the least optimum situation for everything, we get one amp at six knots, two amps at seven knots, and four amps at eight knots. Now, in our case, where we have the motor, uh, the propeller closed in an aperture, it's very shielded from the passing water, so it doesn't give us the best numbers that we could get, but that's the challenges of a full keel. They seem to have the worst of all worlds, but they're good in a storm. With that step-down converter, we're able to run the refrigerator off power being produced by the motor. Down here, next to our battery bank, in the bilge, you see some paper towel. And this is actually our bilge cheese. So it's inside its mason jars, just curing, getting nice and old and delicious. This here is the battery bank that lives inside that box. So you can see there's eight batteries. Each one is a Group 31 AGM battery, so it's 105 amp hours, and it's sealed, which means no maintenance. So I don't have to be checking the fluid levels of each cell. You can see that the positive is hooked up to a negative and on down the line. So what that does is it makes the batteries in series. When they're in series, the voltages are added, so you go 12, 24, 36, 48 volt. And then the same is done on these four here. So the voltages are added, so you pretty much have two sets of 48 volts at 105 amp hours each. At the end, you can see the negative from here runs over to the negative on this one, and the positive runs over to the positive. So you have two sets of 48 volts at 105 amp hours each, and then the amp hours are added in parallel. So you end up with 48 volts, 210 amp hours. So this is our battery bank. Now this is actually a very small battery bank for an electric motor. It's the smallest that we could get by with because when you go full throttle, the voltage sag that comes from it uh, would just bog down a smaller battery bank. The solar panels feed into this battery bank as well to help charge up and you can see they come in and you have the negative running there and the positive over to there. So between these two we're able to charge up the motor bank. Now we have a step up converter for the solar panels which bumps the 12 volt input up to 48 volts. Now the giant blast of power that comes out from this positive terminal leads out to a huge bus bar here that's protected because if you accidentally bump into 48 volts, it's going to hurt. So from this bus bar, there's a 400 amp fuse set in the middle here, which then leads up to the output. Now from this one, it runs over to the motors via the solenoids, and you can see there's this other positive that comes out here. This runs to our step-up converter, our step-down converter, which allows us to run things like the fridge and our navigation equipment off of the motor bank. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much!